Shalom, who praises the Yahweh, Bar Shem, Yahweh Shab, Bar Shem, Harakar, Kadash. Double winners unto your apostles and elders of great mills on the world. And Shalom to the whole full elect. Um, this video is um, going to be entitled Why Did the Brexit Happen? All right. And it's, it's simple, man. This shit don't make no sense <laughs> logically in a worldly perspective. For Britain to pull away from the EU, one of the strongest um, trading agreements in the world, if not the strongest trade agreement in the world, um, for them to step away from that, simply off the strength of a political vote that was initiated by, by a, a, a Prime Minister who actually resigned, that Prime Minister being... David Cameron, after the results was, was read out, is crazy, man. But um, again, why did why did Brexit happen? Okay, and the true answer to that is it's biblical prophecy. That's it, and this shows you when you got stupid people trying to justify it, but you got people that they're interviewing the public on on news platforms, and it's only now that they're actually challenging people's opinions upon wh why they left, okay? Before they weren't doing that, because there was actually a Twitter thread that I see because a brother posted it, all right? And basically in the Twitter thread, the person, the guy, she said, look, if only they would have challenged people's opinions on, on the matter prior to Brexit, we'd probably still be in the EU, Okay? Because before what they they allowed the public to basically go with their dumb view, but now that they've left is when they're challenging their views, showing you that only you know this is it's just part of the Yah Bashem El Shai's program, all right? So I'm gonna play this clip. I ain't really gonna get into the uh, the, the article because all of the political um, jargon right now is all you know worldly. It's the transitional period of the the, the Brexit. But really, all it's doing is fulfilling biblical prophecy, which is the main, um, the underlining, like the the main basis of this video. Okay, so this is Dominic Rupp, All right, uh, I believe he's a financial um, MP or former PM um, um, MP that worked with the finances. Anyway, let's go. I think there's a bit of frustration that we've signed a deal, a withdrawal agreement. We've got a political declaration which sets out the mutual ambition jointly agreed for a Canada-style free trade agreement. When I was Brexit Secretary, that's what uh, Michel Barnier said was on the table. It's what the EU had said uh, we could have once we'd sorted out the withdrawal agreement. We obviously would expect commitments on both sides to be lived up to. Are you suggesting that the Canada-style free trade agreement is no longer on the table from their side? Well, we just need to be very clear that the Canada-style <laughs> agreement doesn't involve regulatory alignment. It's not what the political declaration says. It obviously defeats, as you said in your earlier interviews, the point of Brexit. So we would expect to be treated, um, first of all, in the same way third countries are with the rest of the EU, like Japan, like South Korea, like Canada, but also for the undertakings that the EU have made to be lived up to. So I think it's more a question of getting clarity at the outset. So we're not going to be aligning with EU rules. That's not on the negotiating table. It's not even an issue of red line. It is not even in the negotiating room. We expect the EU undertakings to be met. Equally, take um, maternity leave, take minimum wage, take the bans or restrictions on single-use plastics. In all of those areas, the UK is ahead of the EU. But I can reassure you, we're not requiring the EU to align with UK rules in order to do sure. a free trade deal with us. And that's frankly how free trade deals are done across the world, without those kind of conditions. So I basically main thing is they've left now and they don't want to uh basically he's saying the reason why they left the eu in the first place is not to keep is is to basically you know live a life that's different from the, the lifestyle of eu that's the reason why they left but the funny thing is it's, it's just boy for example they wanted to do a, a trade agreement with Australia for beef. And basically, the the rates that they'll be charged 
were basically undercut the local British farmers and basically, <laughs> you know, basically create it, affect them whereas to the local farmers over here can't make the money they deem. So basically the point is, is this is just a mess on a, on a trading level. It's a mess. Because they even said they were scrambling to basically sign any deal they could prior to the deadline um, a few days ago. All right. So now this is the point. The point is, why did Brexit happen? It's why it happened. This is Mark 3 and 24. And if if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Okay. And this kingdom, as, as we're talking about right now, Babylon the Great, the door of Babylon... All right, you saw Edom's kingdom that was, was bled, was promised to be given to him. Going back to the book of Genesis, the twenty uh, seventh chapter, okay, about ruling with a sword. That's where we're at right now. It's his kingdom. So it says, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. All right, and basically, that's what's happening with this kingdom because the Lord Yahweh Bar Shemel Shai is getting ready. Uh, by Shamhar Rakar Kadash is preparing 2,000 years ago went went off to prepare a kingdom for the saints and basically in him doing that look here and him going out to create that kingdom for the saints basically what, what, what that is is he prepared another kingdom but ultimately that kingdom as it tells you in the in the, the daily prayer you know the Lord's the Lord's prayer, which is what manner the Lord told us to pray. He said, "To pray, we prayed basically that the kingdom, the he- for heaven to be upon earth." Okay, and that's gonna have to, in order for that to happen. Two, two rulers can't sit in one throne. All right, someone has to be taken down, and another has to be risen up, and that's why this is happening. So reading on, and if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. The house of Edom is d- divided against itself, right? The two key, um, two key, uh, the two key characters for that story is America and uh, and Russia, okay, of the same house, but they're divided against each other, and normally they're gonna take each other out. All right, and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, which Esau Edom, the house of Esau Edom, is the house, is is Satan, all right, the physical counterpart upon the earth, and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end, and that's only where it is that that they have an end. No man can enter into a strong house, strong man's house, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he spoil his house. And that's basically what's happening. Because guess what, Yahweh Shai. Basically, all the heavy, a lot of heavy. I mean, there ain't no heavy lifting, but the Lord is gonna have it where the spirit of things, Yahweh Hashem El Shai, the Most High ordained it. That Esau is gonna basically take on Esau, all right, along with all these nations, even the UK, along with Russia, alongside us, all these proxies and, and um, alliances, even alongside the EU and the UK, are gonna fire their missiles upon America and to turn it into a, a desert, a wasteland, basically. And that's basically what's gonna happen. Then Yahweh is gonna come. Because the strong man's gonna be bound, and and the house is gonna be swelled, all right. So let's get into the prophecy, which is the underlying factor. So this is the book of Daniel. Two. And. Okay. 
I'm going to read this part and then I'll finish up on verse 30. Actually, oh God. Oh God. Excuse me. So, it's Daniel's 2 and um, 35. I'm going to jump down. Then was the iron, the clay, and the brass, the silver, and gold. Actually, let me just read from here. Okay, so, you know, reading, you can read into it. It speaks about the the, um, the statue, the head of gold being Nebuchadnezzar, basically. And, um, you know, basically, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and said, yo, anyone can break down this dream and tell me what it means. X, Y, and Z, this is the reward. But the catch was, he said, look, I'm not going to tell you what the dream is. You're going to have to tell me what I dreamt and then tell me the breakdown of it. That's the only way I can believe the breakdown, all right? And it was revealed onto Daniel. So skipping through portions of the, of the dream, you know, head of gold, is gold, silver, brass, and an iron, and an iron mixed with clay in the to- for the toes, okay? So, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. All right, talking about the Roman Empire, but this is more the point. Verse forty-one, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Okay, so previously, prior to this, the Brexit, the division of of the EU, okay, by by way of UK leaving, leaving. <sighs> what you had was a part. Partly strong and partly weak um, EU. The weak parts being the pigs. Okay, Portugal, Ireland, um, Italy, Greece and Spain. Okay, which were financially weak or far less inferior inferior in in comparison to the other countries joint in that bond. And they they would be deemed as the, the clay in that mix. All right. And you have the other countries like Germany, France, the UK that are more strong, strong um, the stronger parts of it, which would be deemed iron, all right? So, it says, uh, the kingdom shall be divided, and now it's become divided, all right? By way of the UK taking leave, all right? And there shall be in it the strength of, I- of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, all right. So there's going to be strength of iron, and that's still the stronger nations. All right, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So the, the the strength really comes from those countries of iron. Okay, because remember it's an agreement where they have to. I mean, I'm going into something else, but let me continue. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Right, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. All right, so they're basically gonna diversify themselves in terms of different nations coming together, it being a melting pot. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Okay, and that leads me to another point. Now you got th- things like this happy Brexit, happy Brexit Day. Post are telling residents to speak English being investigated as racially motivated incident. All right. So now we are now the, well, our own country again, and the Queen's English is spoken, is a spoken tongue here. So, yeah. That's all of those things, all of the prophecies that are written 